From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Good morning and welcome to your statewide edition of Montana This Morning on this Thursday, October 24th. I'm Augusta McDonald here with Miller Robson. Yeah, good morning. Good morning, Augusta. Yeah, good morning. Uh, it's a beautiful week uh, for October yep. and uh, we've got some changes. Yeah, it's uh, cooling down next couple cooling of days. Down. Big warm up for the weekend for some back into the 70s we go. And then could we have a big, 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 big cool down coming next week? Yeah, all indications are starting to come into um, agreement that, yeah, we may have something on the horizon. But uh, today, uh, we're going to be cool and kind of seasonal for the next couple of days before that warmer weekend comes in. It's chilly out there right now. A few spots here. Helena sitting at 43. We've got 40 in Missoula. Butte sitting at 36. Up in Kalispell, we're at 39. Lewistown at 40, as well as Jordan. Miles City at 47. Up in Glendive, we're at uh, 45. Glasgow at 34. Uh, Billings with some rain right now at 45. Some rain in Cody, as well as 43. Now, anybody seeing some rain this morning? and even some mountain snow that will go away as the morning progresses, especially by the time we get to the afternoon. In fact, some of us going to see full on sunshine by the afternoon, heading into what should be a pretty nice stretch of weather before we see our next system come in next week with a chance of uh, more rain, snow and a bigger cool down. We'll take a look coming up. All right, Miller, thanks for tracking those details. And on the campaign trail this morning, it might be the most high pro profile U.S. Senate race Montana has ever seen. John Tester versus Tim Sheehy, a race that could determine the balance of power in Washington. Polls currently show Sheehy he leading the three term Democratic senator from Big Sandy, but Senator Tester has been in close races before with Election Day. Now just a few weeks away, we wanted to sit down with both candidates for half an hour to talk a few of their top priorities for the state. I think we've got to come forth with some really good policies on AI. I am very, very concerned about the direction this headed. And like I said, it can do some great things for humanity. But it can also destroy humanity, and I don't want the latter. I want the former. So Congress needs to get educated. One of Tim Sheehy's bold proposals is abolishing the Federal Department of Education, something we caught up with him to discuss earlier this week. My policies, common sense, and all the above. We need to put families back in the driver's seat of education, put parents back in the driver's seat, and that's school choice. That's if you want to homeschool. That's public school. That's private school. That's charter schools. Last night, we devoted an entire hour to previewing this hotly contested Senate race. You can watch that a program in its entirety right now on our MTN websites. The State Commission on Practice has recommended that Montana Attorney General Austin Knutson have his law license suspended for 90 days. Knutson is accused of multiple rule violations during his representation of Republicans in the legislature in 2021. This in a dispute with the judicial branch at that time. The commission found undermined the public's trust in the legal system. It will be up to the Montana Supreme Court to decide whether to follow that recommendation. Knudsen is currently running for another term as the state attorney general. MTN senior political reporter Jonathan Ambarian is finding out more about that decision and what Knudsen's office had to say. A panel of the Montana Commission on Practice submitted a report Wednesday arguing that Attorney General Austin Knudsen did violate an ethical code for lawyers in his handling of a long-running legal dispute between the Montana legislature and the judicial branch, and recommending that he be suspended from the practice of law for 90 days. But that recommendation has no immediate effect, and Knudsen plans to appeal. Two weeks ago, the panel held a hearing in Helena on a professional conduct complaint against Knudsen. The case dates back to 2021, when Knudsen represented legislators who subpoenaed internal emails from the judicial branch, seeking information on whether judges had expressed opinions on proposed bills. The Montana Supreme Court blocked the subpoenas. Knudsen and attorneys working for him sharply criticized the court's actions, saying it was inappropriate for them to rule on a case that dealt with their own policy and employees. The panel said Knudsen and his office had undermined the judicial branch through their actions and language. Knudsen argued this case needed to be considered in the context of a conflict between branches of government, but the panel said that didn't change their analysis. The Montana Supreme Court will have the final say on what, if any, disciplinary action to take against Knudsen. His office has promised to appeal the panel's recommendation. A spokesperson said in a statement, quote, we obviously disagree with the recommendation made by the Commission on Practice and agree with the 2022 recommendation of the Office of Disciplinary Counsel's first special counsel, Daniel McLean, that this could have been handled privately, avoiding a politically charged disagreement. 
Knudsen's attorneys now have 30 days to file objections to the panel's findings, and the other side will then have another 30 days to make their response before the Supreme Court starts considering the case. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. Jonathan, thanks so much. We'll keep an eye on that story. And this year, more fires are starting from lithium batteries that people throw away. And it's hitting city waste services and the Lewis and Clark landfill out of Helena. MTN's Madeline Heath went down to the Helena transfer station to learn more about a new recycling expansion that aims to prevent these fires. I'm here at the city of Helena transfer station where they're expanding their lithium battery recycling program. Well, previously, we were working with a company called Call to Recycle and they were shipping us small individual cardboard boxes that batteries had to be packaged individually and wrapped in plastic. Um, and that was a free program. And then back in April, they decided that they were going to start charging us for it. The expansion is through the same company and is called the One Drum Recycling Kit, which includes 55-gallon barrels and fire suppressant to be able to ship batteries in larger quantities and in a more efficient way without taxpayer burden. So it will increase our diversion of batteries uh, out of the landfill as well as keep, uh, we have had several fires over the past six months, um, so it will hopefully reduce the amount of fires produced from lithium batteries. The expansion highlights safety and convenience, especially due to multiple landfill fires and a garbage truck fire that occurred near homes. There are dangers to residents, uh, to homeowners, to everybody involved. Residents are asked to place all lithium battery devices under the large red sign labeled lithium battery drop-off near the e-waste section of the transfer station recycling area. Yeah, we're just urging residents, anybody and everybody, to just keep them out of your trash cans, keep them out of going to the landfill. We want them to be recycled properly. Reporting in Helena, Madeline Heath, MTN News. Madeline, thank you. New for you now, she was perhaps the world's most famous grizzly bear. Grizzly number 399 is dead after being struck by a car in western Wyoming. The bear delighted tourists for decades in Grand Deton National Park and at 28 years old was the oldest known reproducing grizzly in the Yellowstone ecosystem. The bear got her name through a research assignment in 2001. She had a yearling cub when she was hit Tuesday in the Snake River Canyon south of Jackson. The bear had 18 known cubs in eight litters over the years, including a litter of four. She was known to stay close to busy roads with crowds of tourists, and many would gather in areas she was known to frequent, hoping to catch a glimpse. And a new resource is coming for ranchers in need. MTN's Sam Adams is out in Clyde Park learning about the disaster relief fund. Montana ranches face multiple risks due to weather, but the Montana Farm Bureau is teaming up with ranchers to be able to help when disaster strikes. How can we support them and what is the best way to do that? The Montana Farm Bureau has started the Montana Disaster Relief Fund, a donation-based program that will help support ranchers if they face a crisis on their operation. So we are just collecting the funds that we can turn around and put back out to those in need. Sky Anderson is a board member for the Farm Bureau, but he also ran his own ranch for multiple decades, so he understands the importance of the fund. I believe that every rancher who's been in business for a period of time runs into hardships. The goal of the disaster fund is to help ranchers with whatever assistance they need. Whether it's hay, um, fixing fence, uh, paying semi trucks to haul the hay into uh, the fire areas, people have uh, suffered those damages. So and for those who want to contribute to the cause. Get your checkbook out. And, and be charitable and send the money to the Montana Farm Bureau Foundation Disaster Fund. In Clyde Park, Sam Adams, MTN News.